Tonight on CTV News, a big weekend for New Brighton. Is the coast to coast a sign of things to come for the struggling suburb? We're Christchurch's biggest sporting event and meet Arana Park's newest babies. Broadcasting across Canterbury. From the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening, a Christchurch man's in custody after being arrested for a 20-year home invasion and rape case in Burwood. The 48-year-old parent has been granted interim name suppression for family reasons and will face the Christchurch District Court in two weeks. Now he's charged with six offences that happened in May 1994, including burglary while armed with a knife, kidnapping, rape, two counts of sexual violation and possession of a knife. Police and victim support continue to work with the victim right up to this very day, and investigations are ongoing. Well, look at this. If you fancied the uh, end of summer dip in Lake Pegasus this weekend, cancel your plans and stay well away. Why? Well, the CDHB's issued a health warning after potential toxic algae was found. When the sun is shining, this lake is normally one of the busiest places in Pegasus town. It's a great asset. It's a great asset to the, to the, the town itself. Pegasus town residents bought into the dream of living by a lake, but now that lake is contaminated by toxic algae. Canterbury Medical Officer of Health Dr Alistair Humphrey says people and animals should avoid all contact with the lake until the health warning is lifted as the algae produces harmful toxins. Dr Humphrey says exposure may cause skin rashes, nausea, stomach cramps, tingling and numbness around the mouth and fingertips. If you experience any of these symptoms, visit your doctor immediately. The algae occurs naturally but can increase rapidly during warmer months. If the water is cloudy or discoloured, avoid all contact. Not all algae blooms are visible to the naked eye and toxins can persist after the blooms disappear. Until the algae clears up, there'll be no lakeside walks for the residents. It's a bit of a concern, but um, I presume it's a short-term uh, issue, um, probably the result of uh, the dry summer and high temperatures, but I, I wouldn't see it as a long-term problem. Environment Canterbury will monitor this bloom on a weekly basis, and the public will be advised of any changes if it gets worse or if the lake improves. Well, amid even more long-term plans for improvement, New Brighton is seeing pockets of gradual revitalisation. This weekend, the iconic Spates coast-to-coast uh, -coast -coast finish line moves to the struggling seaside suburb. An apartment block is also in the pipeline, and a new art gallery opened this week. But is all this, will it all make a difference? Well, Emma Cropper explains. Vanessa Robson is one of the few sticking by New Brighton. She's hoping her new business venture, 105, will be part of the revamp of the area. To support the east side, to support uh, New Brighton community, to support the business community in New Brighton. Uh, yeah, we love, we're all people that love New Brighton and we're just uh, trying to help the community grow stronger, um, you know, to prosper more financially. Housing a gallery that showcases contemporary and traditional artwork. Robson hopes it's the start of of something positive for the area. I think it's going to work. Um, I think that that push has sort of always been there, but it, it just uh, it needed the right people. So I think now the, the right people are coming together and I definitely think um, New Brighton will grow. The 105 complex houses many new businesses, also taking on the challenge of opening in the quake hit area. At 23 years old, Robson's daughter Skye believes opening her own organic produce store is per perfect timing for the area. Because I noticed that there was no uh, veggie store around and like, since the Funky Pumpkin left everyone had been missing out on veggies and they didn't really want to shop at the supermarket and I knew heaps of people here were into organic so I thought oh yeah perfect spot. A $20 million apartment and retail complex is expected to add life to New Brighton. The beachfront building will house residential units alongside retail space. This weekend will also mark the first time the Spates Coast to Coast will finish at New Brighton Beach after event organisers made the decision to shift the finish line from Sumner. And locals believe they're starting to notice the attention the area is starting to receive. 
Well, certainly on the weekends and some of the, the restaurants and stuff, it's sort of going away from that standard retail to more service industries, stuff more service outlets, that's good. We like, uh, there's quite a few nice food places around here. There's sort of alternative sure food places it's starting right. up, yeah. yeah, rather than just the other cheaper shops. So. Do you think it'll get there? I think so, yeah, most definitely. We just live locally, so we're fully, uh, fully hopeful. Because it's um, coming back from the earthquake and it's... I think it's going to be great very soon. It's a lovely place. I love coming down here, but we just could do with some speciality shops and that. Bring more people, bring a bit of life into the place. Do you think it's heading, there, that, heading that way? Well, I think it could do. They're looking at those new apartments, aren't they? Yeah, so that would be a really good boost. 105 opens tonight, but these keen community businesswomen are hoping more businesses will follow in their footsteps. Emma Cropper, CTV News. And still to come here on CTV News, Irana Cheetah Cubs come out to play. And welcome back to CTV News. Tens of thousands of people turned out at Hackley Park last night for the opening of the Cricket World Cup. But for those who missed it, Gordon Finlater was there for the opening of Christchurch's biggest sporting event. Tens of thousands flocked to North Hagley Park yesterday afternoon to witness one of the biggest ceremonies in our country's history. As punters arrived in bunches, performers representing all corners of the globe provided entertainment and build-up to official proceedings. <laughs> A number of backyard cricket games were in action, although the Beige Brigade felt there was something left to be desired. They're all potentials, but um, I'm waiting to see it actually. I'm waiting to see the potential. As we made our way to the front of the main stage, we found some dedicated fans who arrived early to score the hottest spots. Uh, he's here by 3.45, 4 o'clock, coming early, giving us some place here. Yeah. Uh, would you say you got the best seat in the house? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're waiting for the players to come on the ramp. Yeah. Who will you be supporting come, uh, come game time? Uh, game time, first preference is India, definitely. And the next one is New Zealand, yeah. Another adopted Kiwi grabbed himself a nice spot. His first choice, though, was his adopted nation. You know, I'm an Englishman, as you can hear, but uh, certainly support the Kiwis. England's your second team then? Certainly, I should be there when they play in Scotland in 10 days time or whenever. But I should be supporting New Zealand all the way through. These Sri Lankan fans took the cake for dedication though. They've been around the country over the last few months, cheering on their team during the recent test and one day series leading up to the World Cup. With strike bowler Lasith Malinga returning to the team for the World Cup, these fans are confident. I think it's going to be a big change for the uh, Saturday one, yeah, and the Mahal is playing back. You know, yeah, it's a good team, good selection, and uh, we'll see how the Black Cup's going on with Sri Lanka. As the sun began to set over Hagley Park, former internationals offered their view on what to expect over the month of cricket before the official ceremony began. The flags of every competing nation then made their way to the stage before a selection of musical performances, including Christchurch's darling girl Hayley Westenra. A game of fantasy backyard cricket was one of the features of the night, with a catalogue of stars making cameo appearances, including Prime Minister John Key, who welcomed the players to the country. New Zealand and Australia will play host to the best teams in the world. I know we'll be fantastic hosts, and I want to thank everyone in New Zealand for doing their bit to showcase our country to the world. And finally, to the teams that come to New Zealand to play in the competition, can I wish all of them and their supporters all the very best and all the best luck in the world. But to one team, can I wish you a little bit more luck than the rest? Brendan McCullough and the Black Caps, go well, boys, go well.
was then left to shapeshifter to keep the party going into the night before the night's festivities were finished off with a fireworks display. Shapies for sure. Yeah, definitely shapeshifter. shapeshifter. Eh? Yeah. Definitely shapeshifter. By a mile. Yeah. Many thousands of tonight's crowd will be back here at Hagley Park on Saturday when the World Cup kicks off proper with New Zealand taking on Sri Lanka. If tonight's anything to go by, then the next six weeks of cricket action should be an absolute whopper. Gordon Finlater, CTV News. A success for Arana Park. While there's been difficulties in the past, the latest litter of cheetah cubs has survived their first important three months. Jared McCulloch went out to meet them. They're new and ready to explore. These are the latest additions to Arana Wildlife Park and today, well, they're out and about discovering their new surroundings. There are four cheetah cubs in total, three boys and a girl, but it hasn't been an easy start for these guys with their mum abandoning them at birth. It's quite a common thing with cheetah. Usually you see it in first time mums, but um, Meza is her third litter. Um, we've had this in the past with her and it's just quite unfortunate. And that's when Sam stepped in to teach and care for the cubs until they get older. When this happens, we don't leave the cubs to die in there, which is what would happen. We actually have to go in there. So the choice is made for us to go hand rear, which is a bit unfortunate, but um, as a result, we've got four very healthy little cubs. And it's not quite clear cut why the mother shy Away. There's a lot of theories. Um, it could be just natural mothering instincts are not great. Um, also there's usually a lot of stresses involved. So say in the wild um, a predator comes along and mum has to defend for herself um, rather than cubs. Ultimately she has to look after herself so she'll do her best but um, quite often that doesn't work. This can happen in captivity also but it has been tough for her too. Mum's labour was actually very very difficult for her. Um, it went actually over the course of way over 24 hours um, which is a little bit odd. Um, so we're at worried for mum's health and for the cubs health so um, you've got a very small window when the cubs are first born if they don't drink from mum they don't get um, the colostrum milk which is the first milk that's produced by her so they don't get lots of antibodies and things like that to help the immune systems but they also um, will dehydrate really really quickly. This is Sam's second round of cheetah care providing around the clock support for the first eight weeks until they're able to have spaced meals throughout the day and of course the cheetahs are part of the cat family but there's a lot more work involved to look after these furry felines. All the all the hours aside, um, it does take quite a lot. We're here 24-7 for the first few weeks. Um, every two hours you're feeding them, then every three hours and you gradually lengthen the times. Um, but there, there is a lot of um, work put into like diets and things like that. These cheetahs at Arana Park are part of a zoo-based breeding program and Sam is positive with their success. Really happy. They're developing so well. Um, this past couple of weeks we've got them outside for the first time. They've had all three of their vaccinations so they're all um, all able to be outside without too much risk of um, disease or anything like that. We try our best every year to produce cubs and um, we're the only breeder in New Zealand so it's really important we put a lot of effort into that um, and any, any cubs that are produced here they don't just stay here they actually go to other zoos um, in Australasia and even further beyond um, just to keep the bloodlines mixed up and, um, and things like that. And just like us any new place to discover can be quite exciting. It's a sensory overload for them they've never been outside before they um, even a leaf is just so exciting to them so it's pretty fun for us to watch. I was lucky enough to go inside the enclosure and meet Wee Kansi, noted as the energetic male cub. This is just one of the cheetahs here at Arana Park. They're only around three months old and as time goes on they'll be hanging out in this pen more often. The cubs will be on display for the public to see and although being cute and cuddly, which they are, they're still a wild animal so unfortunately they won't be coming home with me anytime soon. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. Very cute. Well, Christchurch roads, frustrating for many of us, but are Canterbury's post-earthquake roads not as bad as we think? Well, a survey says Cantabrians crash less than other New Zealanders. Despite the rough Christchurch roads and angry tempers to match, a recent survey has found people hiring cars in Canterbury had fewer accidents than elsewhere in the country. The CanStar survey of just over 450 people found only 5% of drivers in Cantabrian rental cars had crashes or even dented those vehicles in the last year. This is half the amount of accidents on average in New Zealand. Although few take precautions against being ripped off by hire car companies, only 25% of Cantabrians take photos of the car's condition before setting off and then less than 60% read the contract. Generation Y drivers are more than twice as likely to be anxious about driving a higher car than the baby boomer generation. 
And Jin Wei is also more anxious about driving in a foreign country without a GPS. While females are more anxious about driving a high car, males are more likely to crash or dent the car. And still to come here on CTV News, your local weather and sport. And welcome back to CTV News. Well, in advance of the Cricket World Cup, millions of fans worldwide entered a competition for their chance to get their name engraved on permanent benches at Hackley Park. Here's Jared McCulloch again. Three, two, one. It's not just any old park bench, but a creative reminder of the Cricket World Cup being held in Christchurch. One of the ten wooden benches was unveiled at the Hagley Cricket Oval as part of an online search to find the world's top cricketing fans. The competition was put together by LG, one of the major sponsors of the Cricket World Cup, and 100 names will be engraved on the seats. There was a website, LG 100 Greatest Fans. It was a global thing, so every participating country from the Cricket World Cup had an opportunity. And basically you go and post your most memorable cricket moment. And then the online competition begins, sharing the photo to gain more points to show you're the top cricket fan. With the opening ceremony and first cricket match being held here, the company wanted to give something back to the city. We went through a few design revisions and we had to make a few tweaks here and there, but um, basically they wanted a way to kind of immortalise the event, you know, and at the same time you're providing something useful for the city. Crookshank says around two million people from around the world took part and cricketing icon Sir Richard Hadley was there for the opening and says it's a great gift to celebrate the popular sport. By donating these benches it is a great tribute to Christchurch. We have also a wonderful brand new cricket ground here at Hagley Oval in Christchurch and uh, these benches are a lovely finishing touch to this beautiful ground. I'm sure these benches will create a lot of interest and hopefully fans and visitors will appreciate the history of these benches. The seats on display here feature two Kiwi fans, one from right here in Canterbury and with others from India, Australia and England. Once the World Cup is over, the benches will be relocated around Hagley Park as a donation and reminder of the international event being held here and showing the Christchurch rebuild is in full swing. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. And with the big weekend of sport continuing, here's Gordlana with the weekend sports preview. The Crusaders get their Super Rugby season underway in just a couple of hours when they take on the Melbourne Rebels at AMI Stadium. The home side will be looking to start with a win, something the Crusaders are not familiar with in recent seasons, generally starting their season slowly. With three straight losses in pre-season, an improved effort will be needed tonight to get their campaign off to a flying start. Hayden Padden begins his 2015 World Rally Championship campaign this weekend at the Rally of Sweden. After missing the first round of the championship in Monte Carlo, Padden will be looking to get amongst the points in the snow of Sweden. In his biggest year to date, he will compete in 12 rounds this year, competing for the Hyundai Motorsport team. Padden has competed in Sweden before three years ago and has been testing in snowy conditions leading into the event. The Coast to Coast got underway this morning with two day competitors beginning their journey while the elite longest day competitors get underway at dawn tomorrow. The new look event finish line will be sure to add a new element for long time competitors with an altered cycling route to get to the new finish line at the new Brighton Pier. Well, the draw for this year's under 20 Football World Cup was made earlier in the week which will see Christchurch host Pool F, containing World Cup champions Germany. Germany will play Fiji, Uzbekistan and Honduras in Group F, with all of the group's games played at AMI Stadium. Christchurch will also host the final Group E game, which sees Brazil take on North Korea. And finally tonight, it was all eyes on Christchurch at last night's Cricket World Cup opening ceremony. And it will be all eyes again come 11am tomorrow morning as the first ball of the event is set to be bowled at Hagley Oval. 
The sold-out match will see thousands of fans make their way to Hagley Park, while the rest of the nation are sure to be keeping an eye on the Kiwis opener as they look to get off to the perfect start against Sri Lanka. With tomorrow being the 14th, I'd advise any cricket-mad husbands or boyfriends to get Valentine's Day duties over and done with in the morning so that the rest of the day can be enjoyed cheering on the Black Caps. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. Thanks, Gordon. And if you've got any local sports or news issues you think our newsroom needs to hear about, you can always email us, news at ctv.co.nz. And don't forget this broadcast of this programme screens at ctv.co.nz and on Rebuild Christchurch's website. That website is rebuildchristchurch.co.nz. And now it's time for the region's weather. Good evening, Canterbury. Let's start with Timaru. Your high today was 16. Tamuka and Geraldine, 16 degrees for you also. Ashburn and you hit a high of 16 today. Methvin slightly warmer on 17 degrees. Rakai, you are sitting on 16 degrees. Darfield, Leeston and Rolleston, you all shared a warm 17 degrees today. Lincoln and Christchurch, 17 for you also. Over in Akaroa now, it was a mild day today, you were sitting on 17. Further north, Kaiapoi, Rangiola and Ambly, you were all warmer today, all sharing a high of 19 degrees. Colverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot, you all shared a warm 20 degrees today. And at the top of the region, Kaikolda, you had today's high 22. Taking a look at tomorrow's weather now, Timaru, it'll be another cloudy and cool day ahead for you with a few morning drizzle patches possible and moderate southwesterly winds. Tonight's low is 8, tomorrow's high 14 degrees. Ashburton now, your Saturday will be overcast and rather cold throughout the day with southwesterly winds heading your way. Your low tonight is 8, tomorrow's high 14. Taking a look at Christchurch tomorrow, look out for heavy cloud with a chance of drizzle spells in the morning right through to the evening and some cool southwesterly breezes. Tonight's low is 8, your high tomorrow 14 degrees. Too kind colder now, it'll also be another cloudy and cool day ahead with a few light showers possible in the morning and moderate southwesterly winds. Tonight's low is 8, tomorrow's high 14 degrees. Taking a look at the rest of the region now, Tamuka and Geraldine, it'll be a cloudy day for you tomorrow, 15 degrees. Methvin, also cloudy for you on 14. Rakai, slightly warmer day with a high of 15 degrees. Darfield, Leeston, Rolleston and Lincoln, sharing is caring, so tomorrow you'll all have some cloud throughout the day and a high of 14 degrees. Over in Akaroa tomorrow, cloudy for you all day and a high of 14. Takayapoi, Rangiola and Ambly, there'll be some cloud throughout the day for you also with a high of 14 degrees. Colverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot Cloud and more cloud for your Saturday and again your high 14. Looking ahead for Canterbury now, the cloud is expected to hang around on Sunday with cool southwesterly winds dying out and northeasterlies will develop. It'll be fine and sunny by the time Monday comes around with breezy northeasterlies expected. It'll be a similar picture for your Tuesday also, fine and sunny with those breezy north staying on throughout the day. For Wednesday, high cloud is expected with periods of warmer northerly winds and for Thursday, there'll be some cloud and some cool temperatures with a few light showers and fresh southwesterly winds. And that's your weather for Friday. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Jared, And that is CTV News for Friday. You have a great weekend.
Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.